before we get started actually uh, working on this image, a uh, couple of settings that I think are important uh, to do before you get started is under the um, view menu, you want to make sure that the bounding box is turned off. So it will actu actually say show bounding box, which means it's hidden. Okay, so if it says hide bounding box, then go ahead and click on it. And if it says show bounding box, then you're good. So uh, I just clicked on it just to give you an idea. So yours might actually say this. So you want to click on it so that next time you look at it, it says show. Okay. And also you want to uh, show corner widgets. So if yours says show, then click on it. If it says hide, then leave it as is. First thing we're going to do is go to the rectangle tool, click on that and just uh, click and drag across the screen that creates a rectangle, but we want it to be a perfect square. So we hold down the shift key as we drag. Uh, so that creates a perfect square. Black arrow is the regular selection tool and that selects the entire object. And the white arrow is the direct selection tool and that selects individual points on an object. Now, why did it select the whole object now? Because it was already selected before with the regular selection tool. So you want to deselect it. Now you could click on individual parts of it and that will now only select certain parts of it. So, but I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to go and undo, which is command Z. So the next thing we want to do is uh, make these corners rounded, right? So I do want to select the entire object for that. So I'm going to use the regular selection tool, but then I need to see my corner uh, widgets to make those um, corners rounded. So, but for that, now I'm going to need the direct selection tool. And when I click on the direct selection tool, then you could see the corner widgets appear. And you can just grab one of them and just drag towards the center and that will round off your corners. Uh, next thing we want to do is go to the um, uh, fill and stroke. For now, I'm just going to leave it filled with white uh, because the fill would only matter uh, later on. But for the stroke, I'm going to use a red color and we're going to start with the the, the outermost stroke. So for that, uh, I'm going to do a very thick stroke of about 80 points. And you could see that the stroke over here in the stroke palette, you have the align stroke and you have three different options here. You have align stroke center, align stroke inside and align stroke outside. So for this one, we're going to do align stroke center. And to see the difference is, um, you could see that uh, this is your actual rectangle over here, your square, um, that blue line, that thin blue line, that, that is the outline of your square. The red area is the stroke and half of it is on the outside and half of it is on the inside. So it is aligned center. If I click on align inside, then all of it will be on the inside of that square and align outside all of it would be on the outside. So it's good to know the difference between these, uh, but for now we're just going to do the center alignment. So the next step is to go back to the um, regular selection tool, the black arrow, make sure that your square is selected and go to edit copy and go straight back to edit and choose based in front. You can't really see any difference on the screen at this point because what I just did was I copied the square that I had that had the really thick red stroke and I just pasted it in front of what I had. So it's one right on top of the other. So you can't really see. I'm going to just uh, for the purpose of showing you, I'm just going to move the, the one that I just pasted in front of out of the way so you could see there's actually two of them, all right? You don't need to do that. I'm just showing this to you so that you could see what actually is going on. 
So I'm just going to undo that move. So now that I've pasted that one in front and it's already selected because I just pasted it, the next step is to make the stroke white and now you could see since I made it white and it's on top of the red one but it's the same thickness you can't really see the red one underneath uh, because the white's just covering it so to start seeing some of the red I just have to make the weight of the white stroke thinner so we're gonna go with 60 points okay so now you could see you have the red one underneath and then the white one on top with a thinner stroke so then the next step is pretty much the same you're going to go to edit copy and paste in front and now we need the blue so I'm going to change this to blue color that's going to be 40 points again I'm going to copy paste in front change it to white again 20 points and so now I have all my strokes. I have red, white, blue, white. And then this is still my square right now that has a white stroke of 20 points on top. Copy and paste in front. And now we will fill with red color and stroke with none and now we have our image so uh, once you after you're done you want to group all of these uh, together so use the regular selection tool and drag a marquee around the whole thing so that all of them get selected at the same time and go to object group Okay, so let's talk about scaling images in Illustrator. Uh, there's a couple of things you need to know about scaling. There are basically three ways you could scale stuff, okay? So one is by going to, first you have to have it selected, obviously, um, with, the select, with the selection tool, and then go to one way you could do is go to Object Transform Scale. That brings up the Scale dialog box where you could put in the uniform or non-uniform percentages. Um, another way you could do it is get the Scale tool and just click and drag to scale it that way. All right, I'm going to undo that. And another way you could do it is get the Scale tool, hold down the Option key and click on your screen, that also brings up the scale dialog box. So those are the three ways. Now the important thing to know when you're scaling stuff, especially when you have uh, things like rounded corners or uh, strokes on your image, is over here under options, you wanna make sure that the scale corners and scale strokes and effects are, are checked. If you don't do that, then what happens when you scale things, as you can see, this is almost turning into a circle because the, the corners are remaining the same kind of radius and also the strokes are remaining the same thickness. All of a sudden, it looks completely different when you scale it down because those strokes stayed the same thickness and square got much smaller so now it's not proportional to what it was so I'm going to undo that and so you want to make sure that that doesn't happen by going to the transform scale and making sure that the scale corners and scale strokes and effects is turned on and then when you go to scale it and also if you want to if you don't want it to get stretched or squished make sure you hold down the shift key when you scale it you could scale it down and then everything stays proportionally uh, the same 